All right, so now we're going to look at section 910, which is absolute value inequality. <coughs> um, there's just one objective, solve absolute value inequality. Um, so good reading here. <coughs> when we're doing absolute value inequality, uh, absolute value of x is less than 3. So it says in order for this to be less than 3, it must be within 3 units of 0. Um, so that means it has to be between negative 3 and positive 3. And so whenever you do absolute value is less than some number, and it also works with less than or equal to, we're going to have a, what we call a compound inequality, which is going to be double-sided. Um, you have two of them. So between the negative and the positive of that value, whenever we're dealing with less than, it um, has to be a positive value over here in order for that to work. Um, even if it was an expression kind of like this, you have x minus 5 is less than 3. So same thing, you would do uh, positive 3 and negative 3, and uh, if x minus 5 is going to be in between uh, those two terms. And then we'll just solve it like normal, but instead of just adding uh, 5 to 2 sides, you have to add it to all three uh, portions of the inequality. <coughs> So here they're just explaining that absolute value inequalities with less than or less than or equal to, they both work um, with these properties. Again, you have to make sure the absolute value expression is isolated on one side, uh, which we call standard form before you solve it. So Hawks shows you a few examples. I'm going to skip over them except for one. I think it's going to be the third one. One more. Okay, <coughs> this one I do want to point out. Um, the example four. When you solve absolute value inequality, and you have to say the absolute value of something is less than a negative number. Okay, this scenario there's no solution, and it says since absolute value is always non-negative, so whenever you take some negative term, you do absolute value, it comes out positive. So there's no way it's going to be less than a negative number because it's always going to be greater than or equal to zero, then there is no value of x that you can plug in that will give you an absolute value less than a half. So when you see this scenario, it's going to be no solution. Okay, no solution when absolute value, and you're dealing with less than a negative number. No solution. Okay, so now we're looking at absolute value is greater than a number. When we do greater than, either the number has to be, and we're talking about greater than 3, it has to be greater than positive 3, or it has to be greater than negative 3. So this one is not an and, it's not between, it has to be this one or that one. So the notation, when we do interval notation, is going to be, uh, two-sided, and there'll be a union to connect those, um, and it's separated with the or. So you have two pieces. Before it, it was connected, and now it's going in opposite direction. So be mindful when you're dealing with greater than. Um, <coughs> the expression is going to be a little bit different. Okay, so whether it's just a number or whether it is um, an expression, it's going to work the same. We're going to say x minus five greater than six. So either x minus 5 is greater than 6, or x minus 5 is less than negative 6. Okay, so I think they say that here. Whenever you change the sign uh, from positive to negative, when you're dealing with um, greater than, you also have to flip the inequality sign. Um, does it say that? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it points that out. So expression greater than 3 or less than. So that's another thing to be mindful of. You can kind of see it greater than 3 is going to the right and then less than it flips to the left. So make sure you flip that inequality symbol as well. Um, so it works with just a single number or an expression. And then there's another one that we're going to point out. Uh, just like with less than. Okay, so this example 8. <coughs> when you do absolute value of some expression is greater than a negative number this time uh, we can't
can get a solution, but you don't have to do any work. So here's what it says. There's nothing to do here except observe that no matter what we plug in for x, it's going to be greater than a negative number. Because absolute value of anything uh, is going to make it positive. Which is everything is going to be bigger than negative 6. Um, it's either going to be 0, which is still bigger than negative 6, or some other number. And um, so the solution for um, this expression is going to be all real numbers, the whole number line. So from negative infinity to positive infinity in interval notation. So absolute value greater than a negative is going to be all real numbers because everything you plug in here is going to make it bigger than negative 6 when the absolute value changes it positive. Okay? So you got to be mindful. There's two scenarios. One is less than, it doesn't work, and greater than, it does. Uh, with equal to, uh, just make sure we'll put brackets on the um, endpoint instead of parentheses. And then we'll jump into Hawks and do a few examples.